Um, Simon O'Connor. Thank you, Mr Chair. Look, pleased to take a call um, on this. Uh, just to acknowledge the work that has been done, obviously, by previous ministers and committees, particularly those uh, colleagues of mine who have been on the Government Admin Committee. Uh, we're dealing here with part one, and as the uh, former speaker has noted, this is quite a technical part, primarily around definitions, and so I'll try to keep to that. I suppose the overall balance, though, uh, for the Government is how you take something like gambling, definitional and otherwise, uh, to acknowledge that for many Kiwis it's something which is enjoyable, fun, consciously entered into uh, freely and so forth. Uh, for others, of course, it becomes a problem, an addiction, a disease, uh, however we define it. And so that's the balance that we attempt uh, to seek here. And I found across my own work in the community uh, over the years, uh, visiting different organisations within my electorate in Tamaki who have uh, gambling machines, particularly those of the Class 4 variety, it is that tension ultimately between Kiwis who enjoy uh, quite responsibly the act of gambling uh, and those that enjoy it in a way that is not healthy for them. So I want to pick up what was the first question, um, or rather the latter question put forward by Chris Hipkins of why in part one, uh, number four, around the purpose of why we're changing the, cause, the harm caused by and substituting that from the harm from. I think ultimately what it tries to indicate is that gambling itself in some instances can be the primary uh, cause of trouble, or in other instances it's the secondary form. It's something that contributes, if you wish, uh, towards someone's harm. So if someone is in a uh, vulnerable position, uh, a financially troubled position, whatever you wish to call it, gambling itself may not be that which caused it. It may be an indirect cause, it may be a direct cause. So in other words, it's saying that there is some harm from gambling, but it may not necessarily be the absolute reason why a person is in a situation of harm. So it's a, a subtle, a subtle, sorry? I actually don't think it narrows it. The, um, a colleague across the House asked why it's narrowing. In fact, I think this broadens it ultimately. The older definition here in part one saying that harm harmed by is saying if someone's in a vulnerable position and is a gambler, the harm caused is by that gambling. This uh, change to substitute to harm from broadens it out and says actually there can be a whole lot of contributing factors uh, that has led to this situation. Gambling informs it, but it's not necessarily the only one. And I think that's probably a healthier way to approach the whole question of gambling. More, uh, more often than not, if I was to draw from my um, previous experience, addiction uh, breeds addiction. Uh, and so people who often have serious gambling problems may also have a tobacco problem or uh, areas of issues with their finances, alcohol and so forth. Um, and I think actually this uh, change to the purpose section acknowledges that in a very subtle way of saying actually gambling again is a part, a contribution, a contributing factor, perhaps a secondary element uh, in this. But overall, as I said at the start, part one is definitional. And I think it's really important that this bill get this right, and a serious, uh, uh, well, a serious amount of consideration has been put uh, into this bill by the Government Admin Committee. And it's trying to work with uh, an area that is quite evolving. I know a number of uh, members have pointed out that this uh, bill was first put forward in 2007, uh, but a lot has changed, and we see even in the supplementary order papers that things are changing again. Uh, we learn as we uh, go along. And so we are seeing some of the definitional changes, including around what a class four venue is. Um, simple amendments in word, a little bit like that from the harm caused by to harm from. A class four venue now is seeing the whole notion of conduct change to operation. I think that's an important distinction. Again, the very fact that the class four uh, facility is operating is separated from just how it chooses to conduct itself. I think that provides clarity there. Former member, um, or previous member rather, not former yet, uh, previous member was talking about an FPOS device. It's just broadened that out. I think uh, seven or so years ago, FPOS for us was a very specific uh, device. It was separate from credit cards and so forth. Now it's really uh, almost a ubiquitous phrase that we use. Um, the definition of a gaming machine, uh, Mr Chair, has been changed here in part one. That's noted now to be something which is either partially uh, or totally 
mechanical or electronically operated, and it's something which is adapted or designed and constructed for gambling purposes. Again, it's very clear that there's an array of devices which can be employed here. And ultimately, as it says here in part one, this device, this gaming machine, is something which is played or confers a right to participate, whether totally or partly, by the insertion of money. Oh. I'm oh. going to call Stuart Nash. Thank you very much, Mr. <coughs>